Hi friends, welcome to another video. So ever since I uploaded a video for this costume, um, this was my historically inspired uh, Aurora costume from Sleeping Beauty, I have gotten multiple requests to do a video with a spinning wheel. After a lot of consideration, I finally decided to make this video. And golly what a video it is. There was, um, blood, sweat, and tears quite literally, and quite a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And you will see why later. My original plan was to borrow a spinning wheel from somebody who maybe had like an antique spinning wheel. Apparently they're pretty hard to find, believe it or not, we live in the 21st century. So I wasn't able to find one to borrow and to buy a brand new spinning wheel that's used for actual spinning could cost from 200 to 700 dollars and I thought for just using it as a decoration in a video I didn't think that was an investment I was willing to make. Eventually I just decided to do what I do best and that is to make one. So this spinning wheel was originally going to be just decorative but being me I wanted to make it look at least historically accurate so I didn't have a mob of angry colonial museum workers come after me. So I was looking at pictures of historical spinning wheels and I came up with a design and then eventually I realized that this contraption isn't as complicated as I thought and I ended up just making it a real spinning wheel. So it works, it functions. Um, I'm not the best at it, but it works. I have a couple disclaimers. The first is I'm not a professional spinner and this wheel is not meant to be 100% historically accurate because this is going along with a fantasy fairy tale so it is going to be a little bit different. Second, we have a safety warning and there is a lot to be said. It's important to note that this project isn't your typical hot glue gun Pinterest crayon art craft. This is strictly a woodworking project using big bad big girl power tools. I highly recommend eye and ear protection and I also highly recommend watching um, safety videos of woodworking with these tools that I'm using. Um, before I started wood woodworking, I'm not really a professional woodworker either, but whenever I do a woodworking project, I always watch safety videos online and basics on how to use these tools because you really don't want to lose any fingers here. But you just want to be careful because this spinning wheel caused a trip to the emergency room and you will figure out why later in the video, so... <laughs> Keep watching to find out what happens. Before we go on to making the spinning wheel, I will give you a brief history lesson on the things that I learned while making this spinning wheel so that you can understand the process behind the way I'm constructing it. First of all, in my early researchings of the Middle Ages and late Middle Ages, I already knew that historically Sleeping Beauty would not have pricked her finger on a spinning wheel because in the Middle Ages they would have used a drop spindle. So spinning wheels weren't really a thing in the Middle Ages, so historically it wouldn't have happened. Still, as the classic tale lives on, most people prefer the spinning wheel, so I decided to stick to the Disney version and make a spinning wheel. Another interesting detail I noticed was that in the film, Aurora doesn't prick herself on the spindle. She pricks it on the distaff, which is what holds the fibers. The spindle is actually down here collecting the thread. So in the actual video, I'm going to prick my finger on the actual spindle because I am an educated lady and I want to be accurate because I just think it'd be silly if I didn't it on the actual spindle. Now without any further delay, let's make the spinning wheel. <laughs> I started with two broken chairs and a plank of wood. I sawed my wood in half and joined the two halves together with wood glue and a smaller wood brace. Then I sawed my chair in half and screwed that to the bottom of the plank to make the base. Next, the spindle. I took two smaller pieces from a separate chair and sanded them near the top for a flat surface. I used the bandsaw to cut out two of these things with a hole wider than my 3 8 inch, 3 8 3 8 3 8 inch wooden dowel. I attached those pieces to the chair pieces. Then I cut five circles with about one and a half inch radius and with the 3 8 inch holes. I cut one of the circles with the radius being a half inch smaller. I drilled a small hole in the end of my spindle dowel into which I inserted a sharp tapestry needle. The needle is mostly just for show, so you don't, you just, you can sharpen your dowel if you want to make it look 
like a dangerous spindle. I decided to add the needle to make it look more spooky and dangerous and um, you know I don't you might want to use a blunter needle than I did because uh, that's how I got this hand injury here. Um, I also got a couple more injuries <laughs> from that spindle so I keep like a little um, a little origami star on the end to keep it from stabbing me <laughs> so that helps. I attached my chair pieces to the base with a peg joint. This was done by drilling holes through the base and the chair pieces and using a thin dowel to join them. Also use wood, wood glue because wood glue is going to be like the strongest factor here. Uh, the peg joint just helps join it to keep it together but the wood glue really really helps. Then I assembled my spindle. I also added a smaller circle on the end to keep it in place. Next I made the distaff. I took another 3 8 inch wood dowel and I cut it to the height that I wanted. I sharpened the end a little for decorative purposes and attached it to the base with another peg joint. I used the remaining chair legs as supports for the wheel. And here is a shot of me standing directly in front of the miter saw as I cut them to size. I also added wider holes in those chair pieces for my dowel to go through. And it's important that these holes are wider than, the, than a snug fit because the wheel needs to spin around. I had one large drill bit that I used for the dowels that needed movement and then I had a drill bit that was the same size as my dowels for, for, the, for the things like the spindle drive and the wheel so that it could fit snugly on the dowel. And here is me drafting the wheel pattern. Okay, so I have just drafted my second wheel pattern, and this is what it looks like. I The one you saw on the time lapse was drawn with marker so that you could see it easier, but you really want to do this in pencil because you want to be very precise with your markings, so I recommend having something very thin like a pencil or a mechanical pencil, which has very fine lead so that you can sketch this out. Um, without getting big bulky lines because that can throw you throw your measurements off. It's really really important that this pattern is drawn very precisely so I used a compass or not a compass a protractor to get the angles for all of my spokes and I used a compass to draw the hub and the outer wheel and the outer wheel you saw in the time lapse I used a piece of string, but that ended up throwing off my measurements because the string was not as precise because string can stretch. So what I did is I took a ruler and a yardstick, and you probably just want to use another ruler, but I did not have another ruler, and then I just clamped those together with these mini clamps. And then I taped a pencil to this end and a paintbrush to this end so that it could stick in the little hole. And then I used that to trace out my circle. So I kind of MacGyvered my own compass because this tiny compass will not suffice. <laughs> but yeah, it's really important that you get a proper pattern. You want each of these little sections to be exactly the same because when you're woodworking, it's just really important that everything matches up. Trace those pieces onto another plank of wood uh, and cut out those sections with a circular saw. Okay, so next you're going to want to drill a hole through the middle of your wood so that you can insert your dowels once you cut these out. And the reason why we do this now is because it's a lot easier to drill the hole straight through the wood before you cut out this piece because once you do, it's going to be a very curvy piece which will be hard to get under the drill press. So how I marked this out is um, first of all you want to make sure that when you trace out your pattern pieces that they are as close to the edge as possible and as parallel to the edge of the wood as possible because if you trace it on at some weird angle then that means when you drill your hole it's going to be at a weird angle when you cut this out. So this has to be completely parallel to the wood and I did this by matching up the corners of my piece to the edge of the wood. And then next, um, you want it to be as close to the edge as possible because when you drill it, 
the drill probably won't go through this entire piece of wood, so it's only going to go about that far, which is why I marked it as close to the edge as possible. And then to mark out the placement of the hole, I folded my paper pattern in half and traced that edge on to the onto the pattern onto the wood so that I could get this nice um, straight edge cut in half and then I continued that onto the edge and marked halfway where I wanted this hole to be so the hole could be in the center and then I just drilled it. So when it comes to these curved pieces um, this is probably the most difficult part most difficult part of the whole thing. Um, you can just skip this step if you wish and you can purchase a decorative wagon wheel from Hobby Lobby or Amazon because they just they have these like decorative wagon wheels and you can just use that for your spinning wheel. But um, if you're up to the challenge you can cut out these pieces and these are really really difficult to cut out. This is my first piece. Um, this is my test piece so I recommend you cut out a couple of these just to kind of get the hang of it, get it in your muscle memory. So as you can see, this is a little bit, actually, I don't know if you can see, I'll, I'll try my best, but this is a little wonky. But basically my main tip for you is to just look, um, look at where you're going to cut and don't look at the blade because it's kind of like when you're driving or when you're riding a bike, you wanna look at the path ahead and you don't wanna look at the wheel or super close because once, because if you do, then it's just, um, you're not going to have enough reaction time to cut the wood properly. And what I like about the bandsaw, if you need to stop or go slower, you can, because the blade is just going in a circle like this. So you just, honestly, you can just stop if you need to stop and you can take a break. But here's a comparison video of my first attempt compared to a piece that I cut out. And the piece that I just cut out didn't even need any sanding, it was, uh, that was before I sanded it. Next, I cut out the hub slash inner circle thing, also adding a 3 8 inch hole for the dowel. I think this is the best circle that I've ever cut out of a piece of wood. I glued in my spokes and glued the wheel together. Be before we attach the wheel, you'll need to cut this groove for the drive cord. And here is where that emergency room story comes in. If you don't want to hear it, you can skip to the following timestamp because this story involves a lot of blood. So if you're like, if you're sensitive to that, you can skip ahead. Um, so here is the story of how my dad went to the urgent care um, while making this <laughs> spinning wheel. So um, we were trying to cut this groove and I already had previously cut it before using a handsaw and this was like just a regular old handsaw and I was using like a glove um, which I, I started using the glove after I cut myself three times previously because I was just I'm not stupid I'm just impatient so I was just cutting it and then it and then when I finished um, I attached it to the wheel I, I, I had finished the spinning wheel at this point and when I attached the drive it didn't work because the the groove wasn't deep enough and the thread kept slipping off and it just wasn't working. So we were trying to fix it by using a router, which is probably what I should have used in the first place, but I just didn't remember that we had a router. So we were trying to attempt to cut this groove without disassembling the wheel because it was already finished, like it was painted and everything. and made a, We made a stupid decision. I was going to hold the router on this end and my dad was holding it on the other end, bracing it like this with his thumbs right next to the drill bit. For some reason that didn't set off any red flags in my head, but we were just walking it along the wheel and it was working really, really well until we got to one of the joints in the wheel where it was glued together. We didn't hit a dowel because the dowels are only go in about a quarter of an inch, but we hit one of these joints and it threw off the router. <laughs> and it chewed up his thumb. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but yeah, we did have to go to the emergency room. <laughs> it was it was not pretty. Um, we don't know if his nail is going to grow back. Um, he didn't break his finger and it didn't hit bone, but it was pretty, pretty serious. There was, yeah, it was, it was really, 
it was really something. So yeah, that was an adventure. So yeah, be careful with power tools. And um, I guess a rule of thumb, rule of thumb, I guess a rule that I live by is if you're using something for a purpose that it, that it isn't intended for, it's probably going to end badly. Either you're going to break it or you're going to break yourself. Um, it's kind of like if you sat on a piano and you used a piano as a couch, the piano's probably not going to work after a while. So, you know, just just use things for the purpose they're intended for. Anyway, he's okay now. I'm okay. We're all okay. We're not going to die. So thank goodness for doctors and stuff. Cut out these pieces for the handle. and assemble it like so. Next, attach the wheel and that little back circle. Now the wheel is done so we can now decorate. I sanded the spinning wheel and wiped it down with some mineral spirits. Then I stained it with red mahogany wood stain. I really like this process because I think it brought out all the fantasy vibes. And then I used gold and silver metallic paint to add details. Uh, I also purchased 8 ounce wool fibers to spin. I was going to buy flax, but then I realized that 2 ounces of flax cost as much as 8 ounces of wool, and I wanted enough fibers to practice with, so I got the wool. I used a cotton cord to tie it on, and the same cotton cord for the drive. And with that, I could finally spin. So that is the story, my friends, of how I made a spinning wheel, how my dad pricked his finger on a router and ended up in the urgent care. If you find what I do interesting, please consider subscribing. You can follow me on Instagram. There will be a link down below. You can also follow me on Pinterest. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I am an educated lady. Why did I write that in my notes? <laughs> but um, yeah, there, there have been many injuries. Like, just look at my hand. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a giant gash here. <laughs> How am I gonna say this? Okay. It is very important to note that this project isn't just any hot glue gun. Hot. <laughs> I think I'm going way too fast. Whoa. Guys, I'm struggling. I. Oh. This is a lot of measurements. <laughs> Alright, next you're going to cut out those curved pieces with the bandsaw. I can't say bye without laughing. <laughs>